Ah! Ah! Oh. Okay. Uh, so, ah! Okay. So here's the deal. I was going to make a video about the history of the Meg Megs. It was going to have a little bit on who invented it. It was going to have recent developments like the Gigaminx, Terraminx and the Speed Megaminxes that are out recently. And there was even going to be a little demonstration on how many different combinations there are of the Megaminx. And I was going to show it using the game of Yahtzee, rolling dice and showing how unlikely it would be to get a Yahtzee on the first time. It was going to be great, and you don't get to see any of it, because as it turns out, I don't know who invented the Megaminx. I spent such a long time trying to figure this out, there were so many conflicting reports, and it's just, it needs to be done as a video all on its own. Three hours of dice rolling. I spent three hours rolling dice, and that has all been wasted and purged, because as it turns out, it is now completely useless to me. So I spent the first draft figuring all of this out, and then the second draft of the script, I also had to bin, because I made a mistake when I read a patent somewhere, and as a result that entire thing had to be scrapped, and this is all started again. So this is the third try. It is... Ugh. Give me a second. Here we go. First, we should try and get some names. I searched in Cubic Circular, the Twisty Puzzles database, and various cubing books, and I managed to get a list of nine people who have some claim to having invented the Megamix. They are Ben Halpern, Boris Horvath, Barry Lockwood, Christoph Bandelow, Christoph Miklos, Kirsten Meyer, Schlivka Ferenc, Luke Robillard, and Mario Wellet. Of these people, eight of them are mentioned in the Cubic Circular issues three and four, while Schlifka Ferenc is mentioned as having invented the Hungarian supernova variant in the Tristy Puzzles database. We'll get back to him shortly. First, we should try and pare down some of the names in the Cubic Circular list. Of those eight people, there were only two for whom I could actually find definitive patents. Ben Halpern and Christoph Bandelow. That said, if we actually take a look at Ben Harpern's patent, it doesn't specifically mention anything about the Megaminx. Rather, it just describes a method of creating any sort of twisty puzzle from some sort of guiding polyhedron. According to the patent, <clears throat> an oblique twistable three-dimensional puzzle is an assemblage of parts. The parts of said assemblage can be arranged in an allowable arrangement. In an allowable arrangement, the parts of said assemblage appear to form a solid figure, and said parts are organised by a guiding polyhedron. A guiding polyhedron is an imagined oblique polyhedron. Said solid figure may be any polyhedron or sphere or any amorphous shape. In particular, said solid figure is not restricted by the choice of the guiding polyhedron. The guiding polyhedron is used only to help describe the organisation of the parts of said assemblage, and to help describe the interfaces between said parts. Okay, so basically what it describes is a general method to create a twisty puzzle following any polyhedral geometry, even when the actual shape of the puzzle is completely different. The main takeaway here is that despite the claim that Harpern invented the Megapinx, he barely touches on it at all. Most of the patent is focused on what would later be known as the Harpern Maya Pyramid, more commonly known today as the Jing's Pyraminx. Although the dodecahedral puzzle is mentioned, it's only mentioned as an example of how to create a twisty puzzle using this method. We don't see a mechanism. I'd just like to point out that in the patent, it states that the harpen Maya pyramid has over 7 billion distinct positions, and I have no idea how they got that number. Even assuming that they were including positions you could get to by disassembling and reassembling the puzzle, that is still way, way too high. Anyway, back to the video. Is this inventing the Megamix? True, he did come up with a mechanism that he believed could be applied to a dodecahedron, but is that the same thing as inventing the idea for the Megamix? I'm not so sure it is. This is the part of the video where we get into some weird, not strictly cubing related territory, because there's something we need to sort out here first. When can you be credited as the inventor of something? 
This next part is like a V-source tangent and makes the video unbearably long as opposed to just stupidly long, but it's the only part that I was able to salvage in the previous draft, and I am NOT CUTTING THIS! We can be fairly certain that just because you have your name in a patent does not mean you actually invented it. Thomas Edison is most commonly credited as having invented the incandescent light bulb, but Joseph Swan publicly demonstrated his own incandescent light bulb over eight months previously. Tim Berners-Lee is credited as having invented the World Wide Web, and he never even patented it. So if it's not having your name on a patent, what is it? We could say that until it has been physically created, it doesn't count as an invention, just an idea. This seems to make sense at first. After all, you could go around all day telling people that you had the idea before anyone else. But if you don't have any physical proof, no one's going to believe you, are they? Except, uh, every physical invention began as an idea. Panagiotis Verdes came up with drawings for V-cube mechanisms back in 1985, but he didn't have an actual physical prototype until 20 years later. Despite this, it seems unfair to say that he didn't invent the V-cube until 2005, as he had in-depth drawings and blueprints of designs that would actually work, and we know that because they were implemented like that. Similarly, Charles Babbage is credited as inventing the difference engine, but he was never able to complete one in his lifetime due to a lack of funding. The first example, built in the 1990s with tolerances achievable with 19th century technology, worked perfectly. We know that if he had the funding, he would have been able to complete a working model, but unfortunately it never came to pass. So now we'd run into a bit of a quandary. If we are to discover who first invented the Megaminx, we are going to need an actual definition of what an invention is. It's clearly not the first person to think of an idea. I think of ideas for things all the time, but that doesn't mean that I actually invented them. It's definitely not just having drawn a picture of something as well. Here's a picture of a time machine that I drew in about 10 seconds, but obviously that doesn't mean I actually invented it. This is never going to work. We need something stricter. So with that in mind, this is what I would define as an inventor. An inventor is the first person to have created an idea for an object and has found an implementation for that object that would definitely work in practice. It has to be done with intention too. If someone creates something by complete accident, that is a discovery, not an invention. With this definition, we can say that Joseph Swan invented the incandescent light bulb, Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, Panagiotis Verdes invented the V-Cube in 1985, and Charles Babbage invented the Difference Engine. This seems pretty fair. You may notice that even though I made such a point of making this definition of an invention and how we can't just rely on patent dates, I do end up just using patents for the rest of the video. This is because I wrote that section before searching for any documents on the Megaminx, and as it turns out, I couldn't find any non-patent documents that gave any sort of definitive date, or even a mechanism. Unlike the V-Cube, it seems that these just haven't been uploaded to the internet. I'd love to know if I'm wrong, so if anyone finds anything, please tell me, but that's basically the gist. Anyway. Back to the actual topic of the video, the Megamix. So, on the 17th of September, 1981, Ben Halpern files a patent for a twisty puzzle mechanism that he believed could be applied to a dodecahedron. Could be applied to a dodecahedron. I didn't actually know, because I'm not a mechanical engineer, and I don't know any mechanical engineers that I could ask, so, I was pretty stuck at that point. Fortunately, however, unlike pretty much every other twisty puzzle designer of the 1980s, I was able to contact Ben Halpern, and he agreed to an interview. While I won't be showing it here for his own personal privacy, I can confirm that he did build a prototype that did work and still exists today. Fun fact, the core of that prototype is made of a wiffle ball. I don't know why, but that just makes me really happy. Moving on to Christoph Bandlow's claim. This patent was filed in West Germany on the 19th of March, 1981. Now this is very obviously a Megaminx patent, featuring a description of the mechanism, as well as several very lovely pictures for us to browse. Does this mechanism work? Actually, yes! And I can prove it because this mechanism was actually used in the Tomy Megaminx with some minor variations. If we look at these very lovely pictures from Josh Farron, we can see that the actual mechanism of the Tomy Megaminx is very similar to the mechanism described in the patent. So there we have it. 
Problem solved! Christoph Bandelow invented the Megaminx, there's no point in going further. Right? WRONG! YOU FOOLS! You've got about the Hungarian supernova. Cubic Circular is not the authority on everything. We still have Schlivka Ferenc's invention to look at. Now, this patent is dated the 16th of April 1981, which might seem a little too late, especially considering the other patent, but there are some oddities in here that definitely make it worth looking at. For one thing, who are these other people? What's Christoph Miklos doing there? A uh, right holder? So I did a bit of digging, and it seems like while Schlivka Ferenc is credited with having invented the puzzle on the patent, the rights were actually split between six people. Interestingly, the biggest share of the rights is not given to Ferenc himself, but to Christoph Miklos Sandor. I don't actually know if this is the original Christoph, considering that there are two listed on the patent. However, considering that this one is an engineer while the other is listed as retired, that seems to make the most sense. According to Kirisov's autobiography, he actually did come up with an idea and a design for the puzzle, but when he went to patent it, it turned out that Ferenc had got there first. As a result, there had to be a lot of negotiations that had to go around before everything could be sorted out properly. This is my best guess based on incredibly shaky and rather rough information, so please don't take any of this for granted. But hang on again, who is this third person? An engineer by the glorious name of Resulovichni Farkas Laki Erzsébet. He only has 2.5% credit, and I've not heard anything else about him. Could he be yet another potential inventor? I don't know, because when you search the word Resulovichni, you get no results. Literally none. I tried Google, Bing, and DuckDuckGo, and none of them came up with a single result at all. From what I can tell, he is only mentioned on the internet in two places. One of them is his patent, but only the original. When it was patented outside of Hungary, the only name that appeared on the patent was Schlivka Ferenc, which seems to imply that the rights were only given to the other five people within Hungary? It's very confusing. The other place? This video. That's it. Those are the only places where this word is found on the entire internet. Now, obviously that will probably change once this video goes out, but what? Ugh, I don't know. Okay, look, the point here is whether or not it would work. Does this patent actually describe an implementation of the Megaminx that would work if it were built? Well, yes. Take a closer look at the drawings. Do they seem familiar? They should, because aside from the corners being larger, they're completely identical to the mechanism devised by Christoph Bandelow. What? So now, we have a problem. Two patents, both filed significantly before Halpern's patent, describing essentially the same invention implemented in effectively identical ways. Granted, there aren't exactly many ways of implementing a Megaminx, but this is hard to unravel. On the Twisty Puzzles database, if you look up the Hungarian supernova, it'll tell you that it was invented by Schlevka Ferenc. But, if you look up the Megaminx, that'll tell you that it was invented by Christoph Bandelow. So, What's going on? I'm going to assume it was completely accidental and that neither of them knew about anything that the other person was doing for two reasons. One, Bandler lived in West Germany and Ferenc lived in Hungary, so it's unlikely that they actually met up and communicated with each other about these ideas. And second, I want to keep what remains of my sanity. And this seems like the best way to do that. At this point, I was stuck. We have two people who both have very strong claims to having invented the Megamix. Or... Hungarian supernova? See, the thing is, is that I wouldn't consider the two puzzles different enough to have two different inventors. It's gotta be one or the other. I can't ask Christoph Bandler when he invented the puzzle, because he died in 2011. And I tried contacting Schlivka Ferenc to see when he invented it, but he didn't answer any of my questions, unfortunately. And by this point, it was the 18th of February, and I hadn't uploaded a video in nearly four months. I needed to think of something, and quick. Originally, I was just going to assume that Bandelow must have invented it and put the video up like that, because his document is the earliest on record that shows a working design for the puzzle. But then, like a blessing from the dark and sticky interiors of humanity, a patient would come along that would blow everything out of the water. 
one that seemingly no one had yet noticed. Let me show you. Behold, patent DE3205546. This is a patent which very obviously shows off a Megaminx, and also shows the mechanism by which it would be implemented. And I know it would work, because it's essentially identical to the methods Megaminx mechanism used today. All seems normal so far, but there's one key difference about this. The priority date. If you look, this patent was filed in some far-off patent office land on the 17th of February, 1981. This makes it even earlier than Christoph Bandler's patent, and as far as I can tell, it's the earliest Megaminx patent on record. So who invented it? Unfortunately, this is a more difficult question to answer. Initially when I found this, I saw the name Dr. Walter Moll, and immediately thought he was the inventor. However, when I did more research into him, I discovered that this particular Dr. Walter Moll is most likely one of the leading patent lawyers at a German law firm. It seems that he filed it under his own name as opposed to the name of the actual person who invented it, for whatever reason. Is all hope lost? I don't think so. While I can't give a definitive answer, there are a few clues in this that do allow us to get a pretty good guess. First of all, this patent doesn't just deal with the Megamix. It also deals with the Harp and Maya Pyramid. Note, however, that unlike Ben Halpern's patent, this one doesn't go into massive detail about an ingenious new mechanism that could work with hundreds of different shapes. This only describes two puzzles, the Megaminx and the Harp and Maya Pyramid. Second, this patent is in German, and judging by the fact that its priority date is based on the German filing, we can assume that it was initially filed in Germany. Why is this relevant? Because why would anyone patent something outside their own country before they patented it inside. It's not only a major hassle to do, it doesn't really make much logical sense. Therefore, we can restrict our list down to Germans only. Based on these two factors, I'm going to make a call on who I think most likely invented the Megamix. Now, I could still be wrong here, this is only a guess. There could have been someone who never patented their design, or who took too long to get to the patent office, or maybe I just overlooked something. I don't know, I don't think it's possible to know. This is just my guess. The person I think most likely invented the Megaminx, the magic dodecahedron, is Kirsten Meyer. Born in Zeller, West Germany in 1954, Meyer first splashed onto the scene when he won the bronze medal for the men's 4x100m freestyle relay at the 1972 Summer Olympics. Seriously, he actually did that. After retiring from professional swimming, it's hard for me to tell exactly what he did. What is known is that he did write a solution guide for the Pyraminx entitled The Small Magic Tetrahedron back in 1981, as well as drew up some puzzle mechanism pictures which can now be found online. It appears that it would have been around this time that he filed the patent in question. Sadly, he died in 2001, so I haven't been able to find out more about him. One thing does seem fairly clear though. As far as I'm concerned, judging by my definition, he invented the Megaminx before anyone else that we know of. I'd like to thank Ben Halpern for taking the time to speak with me, Josh Farron for taking some really gorgeous pictures of the mechanism of a Tomy Megaminx, and you lovely people for remaining patient for another video. If anyone knows anything else about this subject, or if I've made a mistake, please tell me and I'll leave it in a pinned comment down below. And now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get some Kahlua.
thanks for watching. Tune in next time for a video on 2011 Worlds and then Rue, probably, I don't know, and then a video on 2013 Worlds and then, I don't know, Square One? I don't know what you guys want.